In this lesson, you learn how to create roof bracing. This module builds on your knowledge learnt in module 6.5 where we looked at vertical bracing. Roof bracing is created with the brace command. Usually the 3D snap option is enabled and the bracing is sketched into the approximate locations within the 3D view. The positions can be fine tuned either by setting a plan distance or a ratio. Go ahead and open up project A. The project opens in the 3D view. In this module, we're going to focus in on roof bracing and also the perimeter beams around the edge of the roof. Let's begin with roof bracing. So on the structure ribbon, you'll see here that we have the brace command. Note that we can type in BR for the shortcut for brace. Let's start by launching the brace command. On the context ribbon, the first thing we'll notice is we can only draw a straight line. This is correct because obviously the brace is a tension member. On the options bar, we have the option here of placing this out with 3D snapping. This is quite important. Normally, when we're working with vertical bracing, we wouldn't have this enabled, but we want that enabled for our roof bracing. So we must make sure that we've checked that option there. We're now going to load in a new section. I'm looking for a CHS section of 101 diameter. So we'll go ahead and select load family. In the UK folder, we'll go ahead here and select structural framing, steel, British standard, and then we'll select circular hollow sections. This is a catalog file. So of course here, if we want to zoom in and out, we can hold down the control key and then we can use the wheel on the mouse to move out or in. And you can see I can zoom in and out of that dialog box. And here we're looking for 101.6 by four. So we'll select this section here and click OK. Now, of course, there's already a circular hollow section loaded into the project. So we're prompted here to overwrite. That's fine. We can just click overwrite the existing version and that's now loaded in. Of course, the next step is to make sure that that's the active section in the properties palette. So we'll go to the type selector here and we'll ensure that we've selected CHS 101.6 by four. So we're now ready to place out these members. Now, a critical thing here, of course, is when 3D snapping is enabled, you'll notice here that I can actually snap to the top of the rafter. Without 3D snapping on, there's no way of actually snapping that information. So you must make sure that you've got 3D snapping on. So now I can select this first position on the rafter here. Notice that I'm just using my nearest snap. We'll set all of this out accurately very shortly. Then I'll go to my next position, which will be approximately here. And then I'm going to go from here to here. OK, so let's now look at how we might set this information out. Let's first switch to the roof plan. So in the project browser, we'll open up 04 roof. And of course, we can now see our two CHS sections represented bracing. Let's begin by setting out this first one here. If I select this brace in the properties palette, I'm just going to expand this actually so we can see a bit more of the properties palette and we can read all of the various different parameters. You can see under the structural heading here, we have this start attachment type, which is set to distance. I've got two options here. It can be distance or ratio. If I set this to ratio, you can see here that if I type in zero, that brace will go right to the beginning of this rafter here. If I was to type in one there, then you can see that brace goes to the opposite end of the rafter. Now you'll notice here that we've got start of attachment to reference element. This is basically the direction that the rafter was drawn in. If I set this to start and then I set this to zero, you'll now notice that the brace goes to the opposite end. So in this case, I'll leave that on end and I'll set that to zero. Now the next thing I want to happen is I want this brace to intersect directly in between these two column positions here. So if I take a measurement between the two grids, I can see here that I have 6,500. So if I split that into two, we're gonna have basically 3,250. So if I select this brace here, notice I've got this uh, end attachment type, and now I can type in uh, 3,250, and that's now directly in the center of those two columns. Let's do the same thing with this brace here. We'll select this one. And once again here, you can see the start attachment type is set to distance. So here again, that can be 3250. That's now intersecting at exactly the right place. And here to get this intersection, we've just said that the bay was 6,500. So here I can type in 6,500 and that one is set out. So let's now proceed with this method to get the rest of the bracing in. So we'll switch back to the 3D view. We'll go back to our brace command. 
and we'll place in some more bracing. Again, this is all approximate for the minute. Then we can select this uh, brace here. Now, again here, I can see that I want this to start at 6,500. The distance here now needs to be 6,500 plus half the distance of this bay here. So again, let's just check that. So we can take a measurement. So if we go from here, so you can see this first bay, as we know, is 6,500. The next bay, if we measure that, is 7,500. So what we need to do is have half of 7,500. So that's 3,750 plus our 6,500, which should give us 10,250. Uh, let's just check that. So we'll select the brace here. And we'll go to our distance and we'll type in 10 to 50. You can see that looks correct there. So we'll do the same thing with our brace here. So that will be 10 to 50 over there. And again here, this is going to terminate at a full distance. Now, of course, if we add 6,500 plus 7,500, that gives us 14,000. So we'll type in 14,000 there. Notice that's gone to the wrong position. Now, again, that's because that's probably measured that from the start of the rafter here. So all we need to do is just swap that to end, type in 14,000 again, and we can now see that's in the correct position. Okay, let's go back to the 3D view here. And you can see now we're in fairly good shape. And of course, we would repeat that for the opposite side of the structure. But let's now focus in on the perimeter beams around the edge of the roof. So we'll go to the structure ribbon. And in this case, we're just going to use the standard beam tool. In the properties palette in the type selector, we're now looking for a universal beam section. So here we're just going to use the 305 102 25. So here we've got 3D snapping on. And what we want to do here is snap to the top of the columns. Yep. So as we do this, we can see now our members placed in. Notice that when we place these beams on the top of the column here, you can see that the reference level is set to roof, but we're dropping down here on a start level offset and end level offset. So in this case here, we've got negative 465.4. So that's how that's actually been set out. OK, so let's continue with that. So we'll go back to the beam command and we'll place out the remaining uh, perimeter beams around our roof. So again, I'm utilizing 3D snapping here. And we'll do the same thing for the front of our structure. OK, so there's our perimeter beams in. The last thing I want to do in this video is cut back our rafters. So let's do that. So we'll go to our roof plane. And here, I'm just going to use a temporary section just to cut and elevate this area over here. Once again, we want to change the depth. We don't want to see that much of the rafter. We can then open that temporary section up. And we can clearly see here we've got that rafter going all the way through. So in this example, I'm going to break this. So I'll select the beam. And on the context ribbon, you can see here that we have split. So I can split element or split with a gap. So I'm just going to use split element here. Yeah, we'll split the element in that position there and this position over here. And of course here, I can then just delete that rafter. I can just use the shape handle here and then drag that. What we don't want to do is change this grip here because of course what this will try and do is snap to the top of the uh, top of the core walls there, which I won't want like that. So we need to make sure that we just use the shape handle here and intersect that through. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Again, we'll just use the shape handle here to adjust the length of that. And later on, we'll put a structural connection on this back to the concrete wall. OK, so that section's done. We can now move our section across and we'll do a very similar thing in here. So again, we'll launch that section. We'll select the rafter. Here, we'll use split again. And we can split the rafter just here. And we'll split the rafter on the other side. Once again, we can delete the rafter piece we don't need in the middle we can select the rafter here and again just use the shape handle to increase the length of that and again as I say we'll cut that back uh, when we put the structural connections on okay and we'll do the final example and that's going to be this one in here this one's completely inside the concrete wall as you can see so again we can select the beam we'll use split and we'll split here and split here. Delete the middle section. And again, use a shape handle just to increase the length of those rafters. 
Okay, so let's go back to our 3D view. We can now see our roofing plan is almost complete. We have our perimeter beams. We have some bracing added in. Of course, you can add in some more bracing on the other side if you'd like some more practice. Okay, so that concludes this module. Let's go ahead and click Save to update our project. Okay, so that's this video complete.